Okay, so um, here we go. Right now, the actual magnet, if you want to come closer, want to walk up, you can do that. Doesn't really pick it up so much. I can take the permanent magnet. It temporarily aligns these poles, and now it's magnetized. one way, all right? Or if you've ever been to um, like a junkyard or seen videos online or read books as a kid, um, a junkyard has to be able to, uh, a permanent magnet isn't going to work. I can't pick up a car and then bring it somewhere else and drop it with a permanent magnet. I need something called an electromagnet, okay? So here's a different way to do it. I have over here a coil of wire wrapped around a very similar nail. And as of right now, I can't really pick that up. Agreed? Okay. This is, um, this is called magnetic wire. And notice the color difference. You might need to zoom in a little bit. So this red color is a, is a casing on it, okay? It's actually like painted on there and it's non-conductive. So on the ends here to make them conductive, I had to actually sand that so you can see that. And on the end over here, so you'll see the copper color here versus the red color here. If they were conductive, it looks like it's conductive. That's why I want to kind of explain that here. If they were conductive, um, electricity would just run straight through it when I actually want it to run in a coil. When I run electricity in a coil, it creates a magnetic field. That man magnetic field is going to go around this nail and align those magnetic poles. So I'm just going to attach this to one end of the battery and this to the other end of the battery. And now it becomes magnetized. That's an electromagnet. So if I'm in a junkyard, I could bring this over somewhere and actually release and then I release the, the electricity, magnetic field goes away, and it actually drops that. Does that make sense so far? Okay, so that temporarily aligns those poles, that picture I just showed you. I get a magnet from that, all right? So now I have two more permanent magnets, okay? So what does that tell you about the poles right now that these are attracted to one another? The opposite. They're opposite, okay? I'm gonna actually use a nail to um, support this here. All right, so right now they're opposite. We'll say it's a north and a south. I actually don't know which one is north. I don't know which one is south. If I had them suspended like a compass says, um, the south would point to north, right? It would be attracted to that. I'd be able to actually tell. In this case, I can't. If I flip this over and I push them together, I can hold them together, but you can see that they kind of keep coming above. So um, they're repelling one another, okay? How could this benefit us in the transportation sector. Kind of like use it to like, because they're repelling, you use that to like push stuff forward maybe? Okay, I can use it to push stuff forward, absolutely. What's one of the, go ahead. So what currently in conventional methods has friction for us moving, Kate? Whenever, you know, like for instance in a train, when the wheels touch the tracks, it creates friction, which is just energy. Meaning it takes more energy to push the train. Right. Conventional trains yeah. have wheels, metal wheels, on metal tracks. I have a rolling resistance, and then those wheels are on axles that go into the train itself. There's bearings there, but it's a lot of resistance, okay? If I could get it to float, like, I mean, your plane doesn't really have wheels, right? Unless when it's landing, it's in the air. How much energy does it take your plane to actually fly off the ground? Quite a bit of energy to make that lift, right? But if we have permanent magnets or electromagnets will take some energy, right, James? So electromagnets will take some energy to actually create that magnetic field so it actually um, levitates. But permanent magnets, that's no energy at all. That's, that's, that's a force naturally found in Earth, and it levitates. So now if I put that on a train, or a roller coaster or something, it's floating above the air. There's no wheels, there's no rolling resistance, there's no friction from axles. The only thing I have to overcome is air resistance. Do you want to take a look at magnetic fields and see what they do? Say yes. Yes. All right, so we talked about this thing right here not being magnetic, right? Or, or regular screws and things like that. But I can take a permanent magnet, actually make it magnetic, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this magnet 
And now that's magnetized. This is a fluid, right? It's a liquid, but it's ferro. What's ferrous? Ferrous materials have what in them? Iron. Iron is magnetic. So it's really very fine iron filings that you saw in the video a second ago, finer than that, but floating in this actual fluid. Okay, so you're gonna have to take a close look and if you wanna stand up and walk over and get closer, I would do that. So watch what happens as I take this fluid that has iron filing suspended in it and I'm gonna put a little drip on this screw. Okay, do you notice anything yet? Which shape do you see? I don't like three people at that desk there. Too many people. Like Too many people at that desk. I don't like it either. I don't like what do you notice? It's spiky. It's taking a shape. Do you see? Do you see some spikes there? Mm -hmm. yes. All right. What's that from? The magnetic field. You see the magnetic field. What else do you notice? Do you see it happening yet? Where is it getting solid? Or not? Where is? Oh. Is it getting bigger and bigger? Oh, it's going down. Nice. It is I've following. See it moving? It's going down. I've seen it. It's following the strength where the closer magnetic field is. If I add a few more drops there. Okay, see it traveling? The, the farther away from the field, the bigger spikes I have. I actually have a little bit more fluid on there, a little bit tighter. And it keeps following down because there's enough fluid there. It wants to get to the source of the magnet. So actually, it will come and follow if I wait long enough and have enough patience, which I don't. It'll follow all the way down. It'll try to flatten out. And it, it will try to crawl over the spot there to get to that point. If I had a strong enough magnet, if I had enough ferro fluid, it would want to get to that point, OK? So I'm going to try to keep this away from my magnets here. And now watch what happens as I pull the magnet away. Hopefully I can do it without dropping the screw. Oh. Ooh. Big difference? You put it back, take the changes back. Yeah. Kind of spread out a little bit more because gravity brought it a lot of it down. So there's more there than there was on top. Okay. And I'm going to try to get it back into the tray so we can see a little bit better magnetic field. Back to an oil. I'm going to get as much of it as I can back into the Petri dish here. I don't really have time for that to all come down there. So let me just... Alright, we'll clean that later. Okay, so let me turn this a little bit. What do you see there? What do you notice now? What is that again? Magic. Not quite magic. Magic doesn't exist. Magnetic. Yes. The magnetic field. Thank you for the same answer. You gotta say it louder so they can learn. They don't. They're not following what's going on. Now, this is spherical, much like the shape. Uh, I'm moving all over the place, huh? This is spherical, much like the shape of uh, what do we live on? What's this called? Sphere. The planet, right? Which is spherical. And do we have a north and south pole? Yeah. And we have our own magnetic field. So watch as I rotate this like I rotate the Earth. Uh-oh, now what do you see? What do you notice on that side versus that side versus in the middle? The magnetic poles are on the side. Right, so now you can start identifying the poles. I have a top pole, could be a north. I don't know yet. I, I could actually figure that out, which, like a compass, right? Compass, it points to the north because it's the opposite pole. We talk about opposites attract and the same poles re, uh, repel one another, and I could rotate, and you'll see that's my, let's call it the south pole, let's call that the north pole. So you could tell and very see very clearly on here that there's very two specific magnetic fields, and you could kind of see the shape of them. Um, as it's close to the magnetic field, it's pretty tight and very pointy spares. As I pull it away, you can see that the magnetic field kind of spreads out a little bit, and I have, so I'm just pulling this away from the Petri dish, Dish, and eventually it kind of gets away from the magnetic field completely as I come back they're starting to appear so it's kind of this is kind of one of the few times you could actually see a magnetic field right magnetic fields are around us all the time you just can't see them so this is giving you a better visual representation of what they actually look like cool